all right what's going on everybody so we finally got that big nintendo direct and man they did their thing man usually on this channel when i've talked about nintendo directs in the past like going into these things i usually go in with low expectations for me personally i can't speak for anyone else but for me personally when i go into these nintendo directs i usually just go in with the lowest of low expectations these things usually for me for me they're not that great they're usually awful they have had some decent ones in the past but i think this one today was just phenomenal this was truly peak this and i, I hate the i hate to use that term because everybody it's overused but man this was literally a peak direct man this is the best they've done in quite a while and going into all of these different showcases whether whether it be the Xbox Showcase, whether it be a PlayStation Showcase or the Summer Games Fest or anything like that. Like, there should be three or four games that everybody could say, okay, that looks good, I'm interested in that. That that looks cool, I'm gonna buy it day one. There should be games like that, and this thing, it did it for me. There were at least 10 games, and that's a phenomenal number, especially when it comes to a Nintendo Direct for me, because I'm not the biggest Nintendo gamer. I have a Switch. But that thing collects so much dust. But now I gotta, I might have to dust this thing off, man, after this. One thing I gotta say before I get in. I'm not gonna go over everything they showed at this at this uh, thing. But I will go over uh, some of the things that I thought looked good. So what I will say over the past week, you know, we just had that, that big Xbox Direct. And I've seen a lot of people say that that showcase was phenomenal. It was great. But dude, and I'm not trying to turn this into a fanboy thing, because I'm not even a Nintendo fanboy or PlayStation fanboy, none, uh, nothing like that. I game on all the consoles. I have a PlayStation. I have a Switch. I can play Xbox games because I have a PC, so I do have a invested interest in that ecosystem. But here's the thing, dude. That Xbox conference, terrible. In my opinion, this might be the biggest hot take, but look. There's a big difference, there's a clear uh, cut difference between what I just saw here today and what I saw with that Xbox conference. And the thing is, a lot of people went away from that Xbox conference saying, man, the best they did in years. And for me, I think that actually last year's Xbox conference, man, that one was actually way better in my opinion. And here's the thing, the difference between this Nintendo Direct and the Xbox showcase that we got uh, this year is the fact that hey nintendo they showed not only story with their games they showed a substantial amount of gameplay with literally most pretty much all of their games with the exception of one that i'll talk about a little later on see the thing with the xbox direct not to get too in the weeds with that because i mainly want to focus on the nintendo direct but i didn't get to talk about the xbox direct kind of want to talk just a little bit about that before diving into what we saw today what i will say is that yeah we had some substantial gameplay ga gameplay for about four games right uh doom uh adam fall and two others that i'm blanking on but it was very few uh games in between that we got like substantial gameplay most of what we got in that xbox showcase was cinematics and that is really unacceptable especially for some of those games like for fable a state of decay and perfect dark those games that have been in development for years that we haven't seen a whole lot of gameplay from and then when you finally show state of decay it's a cinematics it's a cinematic and granted those people that have played the other state of decay games you could just give them that and they'll be satisfied because they, they know what to expect. Same thing with Gears of War E-Day, right? But the thing is, for somebody like, for Xbox, I know they want to bring in new customers. For someone like me, I'm like, okay, so what am I supposed to get excited for? What is the game going to be like for returning players? What are the new mechanics? Like, yeah, for Gears of War, you could say, okay, well, it's, it's the prequel. So we're going to get to see what happened beforehand. But it's like, okay, well, what is new in terms of gameplay, right? And with Fable, dude, 25 seconds of gameplay. I've seen so many people talk about, oh, man, Fable looks great. I felt like they didn't even show anything last year. But in-engine cinematics. And, okay, I can buy that. Okay, and the graphics look good. Great. That's the only thing I can say about the game is, oh, it looks great. The graphics look great. That's it. I can't say anything about the gameplay. Even this year, 
They showed you 24 seconds, maybe 25 seconds of gameplay. Mostly that girl just walking around. There's a quick shot of her uh, using a spell and then she's about to like shoot something with her bow. That's it. For me, it was a boring story trailer with barely any gameplay. And like I said before, th that game has been in development for years. Same thing with Perfect Dark. It was cut up too much. It was way too cut up. It was almost like they were they were scared to show it. And and like I said earlier, there's only one game in this showcase that they, that they did that with. And I'll talk about that later. There's a lot more I could say about that pitiful Xbox showcase, such as how awful South of Midnight looked with its low frame rate cutscenes slow traversal and janky combat or how the showcase had a lot of games that felt like filler just to pad the show out and so they can boast at the end about how many games they showed similar to Jeff and the Summer Games Fest. If I'm being honest there were only two good announcements at that presentation those being Claire Obscure Expedition 33 and Frag Punk. I'm not a big first person shooter guy, but Frag Punk had a cool looking art style and a unique twist with the card powers that affect the gameplay. This honestly looked much more interesting than Sony's Guardians of the Galaxy Overwatch ripoff Concord. And Game of the Show Expedition 33 looked amazing. That was the only thing that caught me off guard with this whole presentation. The graphics were impressive and the story, the plot, it seems very unique. You take control of a party sent on an expedition to stop someone referred to as the Paintress from killing people at a certain age each year. The combat appears to be a mix of action and turn based, although from what I read it's supposed to be just real time. Out of all the third party stuff that was shown, Microsoft probably should have locked this one down as an exclusive. Then again, the company is slowly becoming a third party publisher, but okay. Let's go again to the Nintendo Showcase. Let's go again to what y'all came here for. Like I said before, there were 10 games that they showed that really caught my eye. Uh, Mario and Luigi Brothership. It's been a long time uh, for, for that franchise. It's been a long time since I played those games. That looked good. Fairy Tale 2. So this Nintendo Direct basically, they spoke to that anime side of me because I'm a big anime fan. And I'm a big fan of Hiro Mishima. And they, dude, they showed two of his games. The first one being Fairy Tale 2 that's coming out this winter. And I gotta say, as, as me being a big Fairy Tale fan, and I liked the first game, it wasn't amazing or anything. But for anime games, like y'all gotta understand, for those of y'all who don't play anime games, we get a lot of arena fighters, a lot of the same thing. So when we get, so when we got something like the original Fairy Tale, which was a, a turn-based RPG and I know some people didn't like the whole turn-based RPG thing but I but I appreciate it because it's different it's something different from what we normally get so to see that they're going real time with this that does kind of make me a little sad but I'm just glad that we're getting a sequel we're tackling the final arc the Alvarez arc but the only thing with this and I'm hoping that this isn't a switch exclusive because man those graphics look rough man those graphics look rough it looks rougher then the original and the original it didn't look terrible but it wasn't the greatest graphically like it wasn't it wasn't pushing the ps4 dragon quest 3 hd 2d now this man so with the hd 2d games i'm gonna be honest octopath traveler um live alive and i think there's another one that i'm blanking on what was it project triangle is this another 2d hd game i'm thinking of but basically those 2d hd games i'm not the biggest fan of i this is gonna be another hot take i think those games look ugly every time i look at the gameplay for something like octopath traveler and stuff it looked like someone smeared vaseline on the screen that's what it looks like it looks like someone just smeared vaseline all over the screen it, it's that weird mix of 2d 2d and 3d environments that is kind of off-putting but this being Dragon Quest 3, this being uh, Dragon Quest uh, period, like I have, like some of my first RPGs was basically Dragon Quest, especially Dragon Quest 3. I love those. I love that game, that and the first one that I remember playing on the Game Boy Advance and, and the Game Boy uh, back in the day. And so I look at this and the gameplay doesn't look bad. It doesn't really look as as bad as I usually would say a lot of those 2D HD games look to me. So... For this, I'm definitely looking forward to it, and especially with the announcement, and that was so great what they did with this, because at the end of the Dragon Quest 3 trailer, they basically revealed that Dragon Quest 1 and 2, that's going to be coming 
2025. This was rumored by Midori on Twitter, I want to say maybe a few weeks ago. But either way, that was a hype announcement. And then going back to my anime bag, they had Farmagia. And look, I'm not the biggest fan of, of farming games. I, I like That doesn't really appeal to me. But the monster raising aspect of this and the combat aspect of this, it looked interesting. I like that they didn't go... So I like that they didn't go for a traditional battle system like they do with the other monster fighters. Like it could be one on one or two on two. Pokemon, Digimon, like like how that battle system is. They're basically doing something different. And it's kind of, and this probably might be weird comparison, but it kind of reminds me a little bit of Pikmin in the sense that you basically have a group of monsters by you and you're just like giving them commands. So you're telling them to attack and stuff. But um, it looked cool to me, a very unique mix of Pokemon and farming elements, a very unique take on basically uh, monster battling and then raising them, uh, basically the monsters transform so like, so while you're farming, cultivating your crops, they'll eventually turn into monsters and I think that's a unique take on this genre or uh, subgenre. That will be coming out November 1st. Another thing I gotta say before I get on to the next game though, Nintendo's fall, or just I could, I could say really just fall in general, is gonna be stacked, man. I mean, people were saying that uh, Microsoft's lineup is gonna be stacked this fall. Nah, Nintendo, Nintendo said hold my beard. They literally, their lineup is pretty stacked. But going to the next game, Phantom Brave, The Lost Hero, that's gonna be 2025. This was the turn-based RPG where you're gonna be able to combine your party members with different objects on the field. And that basically allows them to do different things. Like they showed where you can uh, combine one of your party members with a fan and it'll like blow the enemies away or whatever. You can fuse them with your main character too. Again, just like a lot of these RPGs they showed, the battle systems were just really unique. And that's something like, that's something that like really caught my eye with a lot of these. Um, Again, like I said, they're speaking to me with the, the whole anime aesthetic with a lot of this stuff. They have the, uh, like this one in particular, it had a, a chibi art style with it for the models and then the art style for the portraits and stuff. It kind of reminded me of this Gaia. I don't know if it's Miss Entertainment doing this or it could be somebody else. The only thing about this, I will say they need to clean up that frame rate. But other than that, looks interesting. 2025 game i'll keep my eye on i'll keep my eye on marvel versus capcom probably not gonna get it but marvel versus capcom great games uh great capcom fighting games had to at least mention that one super mario party jamboree i think this one is the first one that's online i thought the last one i thought one of the biggest complaints about the last one was that it didn't have online or maybe i'm thinking about the one that was before that either way this one has a new online mode with up to uh, 20 players can play in it and then they said there's other modes that they didn't go into um there's gonna be 110 mini games uh five new boards including including some from the first two games in the series that's definitely gonna be a big one for them this fall Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. This one actually surprised me because here's the thing. This one has, and I and y'all can correct me in the comment section below about this one, Link's Awakening Remake art style. I think that's the correct one if I'm not mistaken. But this one has that art style and I'm not the biggest fan of it. But gameplay wise, it's very innovative compared to Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom. This is the type of thing that I think is really unique. When I look at Breath of the Wild, when I look at Tears of the Kingdom, it has a lot of stuff. It does a lot of stuff that that has been done before it. It's done a lot of different things that have been done in other games. Like, like gliding and climbing. Gliding, climbing, and all that other stuff. We've seen that in other games like Assassin's Creed, Far Cry, you name it. We've seen it way before Breath of the Wild, way before Tears of the Kingdom, but it's the way that they put those things together. This one is doing something really creative where uh, Zelda, she has this ability to create clones of objects in the environment. They call them Echoes, and basically that helps you to navigate the environment, defeat uh, defeat enemies and stuff like that. Like this was the most excited I have probably been watching a Zelda game, uh, Oracles of Seasons, and that was 20 years ago. This one, I'm gonna keep my eye on. I totally wasn't expecting it. Then we had this game, The 100 Line Last Defense Academy. So this is from the guys that did Danganronpa. Like as soon as they showed it, I was like, wait a minute, this looks like Danganronpa. 
Captain Rampa. And sure enough, with that art style, it's pretty distinct. This one was another one of those unique RPGs. You're going to be spending 100 days at the academy. You got to defeat these these monsters or whatever. And it looks like it's going to have those visual novel elements like in Dankenrapa and uh, the other games that this studio has been known for. Romancing Saga 2. I haven't played any of the Romancing Saga games. I've actually, I don't think I've really heard of this. But it looked interesting, honestly, with the uh, the kingdom expansion element of it. You can fight the bosses in any order that you want to. And the turn-based gameplay, it looked unique. Oh, and I almost forgot, they closed the show by finally showing Metroid Prime 4. After seven long years, we finally got to see gameplay. See, unlike Microsoft, Nintendo understands that you can't go all these years missing in action and not show some gameplay. Unfortunately, the game does look a little dated, like graphically speaking, and much like Microsoft with Perfect Dark, the gameplay was cut up into little snippets. All these games, the games that I mentioned right here, dude, they had me with this one. They had me. Like, if I had to give this, if I had to give this director rating, I would probably give it a 10 out of 10 for me. And that, that's the highest I think I've given one of these directs uh, in years, man. In years. Like, dude, Jeff Keighley with the Summer Games Fest, that was a snooze fest. There were, like, a few games there that, that I liked, that I thought were interesting, that looked good. Like, the Power Rangers game, Killer Bean, and um, maybe one other thing. But, yeah, like, Summer Games Fest, Xbox Showcase, uh, Phil Spencer, Jeff Keighley. Y'all need to look at this. Y'all need to look at this Nintendo Direct because I think this was the best, the best thing we've seen all year. But that's just my opinion. Let me know what y'all think in the comment section below. Like the video. Subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.